The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Seventh chapter, text number one, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 13th of June, 1974, in Paris, France. Translation. Now hear, O son of Pritha, Arjuna, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. We are speaking from Bhagavad Gita. I think most of you know this book, Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is sometimes translated in foreign languages, the song of God. In other words, God Himself speaking. So far we are concerned, we cannot understand God by mental speculation. Even in this material world, we cannot understand what is there in the planetary system. So our knowledge is very, very limited. Besides that, we have got four deficiencies. The one deficiency is that we commit mistake. Anyone, any big man of this material world, he commits mistake. Besides that, he is illusion. Illusion means to accept something what is not fact. Just like we accept this body as self. This is called illusion. According to Vedic understanding, anyone who thinks of this body as the self, he is animal. Just like a dog, he thinks that he is the body. Similarly, if a man thinks that he is this body, he is American or Indian or Frenchman or German or Hindu or Muslim with this bodily concept of life. So according to Vedic understanding, this conception is animal conception. So this is called illusion. The next item is cheating. Cheating means with imperfect knowledge one takes the place of a teacher. And the last deficiency is that our senses are imperfect. It is not independent. Still, we are very much proud of our senses. For example, if this class of men, they say that, can you show me God? He does not think whether he has got any power to see. So far our eyes are concerned, we can see so long when the conditions are fulfilled. Just like here we are speaking, as soon as the light will be off, we cannot see one another. So what is the value of this eyes? You simply see under certain condition, you simply smell under certain condition, you can hear under certain condition. So therefore your materialistic life is conditional life. So with this imperfect senses we cannot understand what is God. The only sense is very usable, just is this ear. Just like man is sleeping and some enemy has come to attack him or to kill him, so still he is nicely sleeping. But if some friend cries, Mr. such and such, wake up, wake up, here is enemy, he will kill you, kill you. He can fly up. So when all other senses are useless, the ear can work. Therefore, to understand God, we have to use this ear and we have to receive the sound vibration and it will act. So, as you are all ladies and gentlemen interested 
in the yoga system. So the first class yoga system is bhakti yoga. In this Bhagavad Gita, just now I am trying to explain the first verse of the seventh chapter. The seventh chapter begins after concluding the sixth chapter. In the sixth chapter, the yoga system has been explained. It is said that one has to select a very sacred, secluded place. He has to sit down there in a posture, just like a perpendicular, a straight line, the neck and the body. And then he has to think of Krishna or Vishnu. The thinking should be so careful that one cannot divert his attention to any other subject matter. In the Patanjali yoga system, it is said, yoga indriya samyama. Yoga means to control all the senses. Because unless the senses are controlled, mind will be flickering, go this way, that way, that way. So mind is the leader of all other senses. If you control the mind, concentrate on the feature of the Supreme Lord, that is the yoga system. Therefore, describing the yoga system, Krishna prescribes so many methods, but after hearing the system of practicing yoga, Arjuna replied that, Krishna, this system is so difficult, I cannot practice it. So, point is that Arjuna was not ordinary person, he was specifically friend of Krishna. So, he said that this practice of yoga, auto yoga, is not possible by me. So Krishna therefore concluded the yoga system that don't be disheartened. There is another yoga system, bhakti yoga system. You can adopt it. The bhakti yoga is summarized in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Yoginam api sarvesham madhugata antarātpana sadhyāvān bhajati yoma same jukta tamamat. We find out this last verse of the sixth chapter. Yogi nāma pi sarmita madhvata antarātma. So, this is the topmost system of yoga, bhakti yoga, always thinking of Krishna. So that system, bhakti yoga system, is being described in the seventh chapter as Bhagavan Uvāca, Maya Saptamana Pratha Yoga Jinjana Madasaya Asam Sayam Samagrama Jathaga Sati Tattva. My dear Jo, Maya Saptamana. Just try to divert your attachment to me. Attachment, we have got attachment. Everyone has got attachment to something. So, this yoga system, Bhakti yoga system means simply divert the attachment to Krishna. When the mind is fully divert for increasing attachment of Krishna, that is called Bhakti Yoga. So, yoga Junyan Madas, this yoga system should be practiced the Madasra. Madasra means under my direct supervision. This yoga system means it is not impersonal. And therefore the word is used, Bhagavan Uvas, the Supreme Personality of God has said. So Bhagavan, the Absolute Truth, He is a person. Sometimes we think, there are many, they think the Absolute Truth is impersonal. But the Absolute Truth is person. Impersonal realization of the Absolute Truth is partial. It is not complete realization. Therefore it is mentioned here, asaṁsāyaṁ, without any doubt, and samagraṁ, in full, 
After all, yoga system means an endeavor to understand the absolute truth. Yoga means linking, connecting. So when you connect with the absolute truth, that is called yoga. Yoga, another meaning is plus, adding something else. Just like two plus two, this is also called yoga. Similarly, God is one, I am also one. When we join together, that is called yoga. There are many methods of yoga practice, but the direct method is bhakti yoga. I am a person and God is also a person. When we intermingle together or we join together, that is called bhakti yoga. Bhakti means the process of connecting with the Supreme Personality of God. As soon as we use the word bhakti, means the process of devotion, there must be bhakta and bhagavan. The bhagavan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and bhakta is Arjuna. So bhagavan is personally teaching Arjuna the process how he can understand Him fully and without any doubt. Therefore it is mentioned here, Bhagavan Uvas. Bhagavan Uvas means the Supreme Personality of Godhead said. So the Absolute Truth is realized in three annular vision. It is said in the Vedic literature, vadanti tat tattavidas pratyam yad jnanam adhyam Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaniti, Sabdate. The absolute truth is the ultimate truth, tattva. Tattva means absolute truth. So those who are aware of the absolute truth, they say that absolute truth is one. But he is realized in three angular vision, namely Brahma, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Those who are trying to speculate and understand the Absolute Truth, they can reach up to impersonal Brahma. So generally, speculators means big, big philosophers. They can understand that impersonal Brahma. These impersonalists are generally known as Gyanis. Gyanis means the wise man or persons who are very much aware of everything. They can understand the impersonal feature of the Absolute Truth, but there are other class who are called yogis. The yogis can understand the Paramatma feature of the Absolute Truth. Paramatma means the super-soul who is situated within everyone's heart. and the personal feature of the Lord is realized by the bhaktas or the devotees. Jnanis and the yogis, they cannot understand perfectly what is God. God is transcendental, chit ananda combination of eternity, knowledge, and blissfulness. So if we realize the Absolute Truth partially, simply, the eternity knowledge, that is called brahma And when one is further advanced and he realizes the Absolute Truth as a localized aspect, Paramatma or Lord Vishnu within anyone's heart, by the yogic practice, that is called paramatma Gyan or knowledge of the Absolute Truth. Actually, the objective is one, but different degrees of understanding. One example can be given in this connection. Just like the sun globe and the sun god and the sun sign. The sun sign is also light and there is temperature. And the sun globe is also light and there is temperature. And the sun god within the sun globe there is a personality known as sun god. That is also light and temperature. But all this light and temperature, there are degrees. 
the sunshine, degree of temperature and light is less than the sun glow. And the sun glow temperature and light is less than the sun god. So when you reach the sun god, then you understand the complete temperature and light. That completeness is realized by this word Bhagavan. Therefore the words are used there, asamsaṁ samagraṁ. You can understand me in full and without any doubt. So if you are interested to understand the Absolute Truth God, then we must take to bhakti yoga. And if we want to understand the Absolute Truth with some doubt and not incomplete, then we may take jnana yoga or jnana yoga. So our, this Krishna Consciousness movement is meant for understanding the Absolute Truth in complete, without any doubt and without any incompleteness. This is also confirmed in the 18th chapter, that if you want to know God in completeness and without any doubt, then you have to take to bhakti yoga process. It is said, bhaktyamāma vijñānāti javāna jasyāmi tattata tato māna tattato gātyā visate tadanantaram the meaning is that one can understand me only by this bhakti yoga process. And when one is fully aware of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then he becomes fit to enter into the kingdom of God. So the purpose of yoga practice is to promote or to leave this material atmosphere and enter into the spiritual atmosphere, all the yogis. The jnana yogi they remain in the impersonal feature of the Absolute Truth. The dhyana yoga is practicing the localized aspect, but the bhakti yogi is promoted directly in the planet, which is called Goloka Vrindavan, and there he associates with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and enjoys life blissfully eternal. So there are different planetary systems within this material world, uh, just like we are situated, it is called Bhūr-loka. Above this there is Bhūr-loka, above that there is Saru-loka, there is Jana-loka, there is Mahaloka, Satya-loka. In this way there are seven steps of planetary system up and similarly seven planetary system down. So by Jnana Yoga, by Jnana Yoga means mystic yoga system, we can be promoted to the higher planetary system. But if you practice the Bhukti Yoga, then you go to the transcendental world directly and associate with the Supreme Personality of God. The Dhyana Yogi and Jnana Yogi can also go to the Brahma Loka or Brahma Jyoti, but there is chance of falling down again to this material world. But generally, Jnana Yogi remains a speculator within this material world, and Dhyana Yogi they, as soon as they get some material miracle power, they become implicated with this power, no more going to the spiritual world. But Bhakta Yogi, being perfectly the yogi, the topmost yogi, he can enter the kingdom of God or the planet where God is there. God is everywhere, but he has got a special planet which is called Golok Vrindavan. You can enter there and mix with the Supreme God, uh, just like we are here uh, mixing one another. I can see, we can see me. Similarly, you can go directly see God and play with Him, dance with Him, play with Him, eat with Him. That is the perfection of life. This perfection of yoga can be achieved by practicing bhakti-yoga as it is recommended here. 
मैया सत्समना प्राप्त जुगो में इंजन मदास है अंडर द गाइडेंस ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड इट और इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बोना फाइन इफ यू प्रैक्टिस दिस योग देन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड the supreme personality of god is incomplete without any doubt and if you practice this yoga in this life and try to understand krishna what he is then after giving up this body you have to give up this body today or tomorrow then you go directly to krishna it is that for explain in the fourth chapter जन्म कर्म में दिव्यम जो जाना थी तत्व तत्ता देहंग पुनर्जन्म नहीं थी माँ में थी कौन किया मेजर जॉन एनी वाज इफ यू सिंपली ट्राइज टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाई आई कम इन दिस मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड व्हाट इज माय मिशन व्हाट डू आई डू इफ यू सिंपली वन अंडरस्टैंड देन ही इमीडिएटली बिकम्स फिट फॉर बींग ट्रांसफर टू दिस स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड फ्लावर कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस मूवमेंट is to educate people how to understand krishna and then make it like perfect thank you very much any question so you think that many people are wondering why we are making so much propaganda for our krishna conscious movement the usually india doesn't make propaganda for our philosophy he does not know what is india in india he will see village to village they are chanting hari krishna in every village and every town there is a place which is called hari sabha or every neighborhood now after the british rule they have forgotten this culture but the originally every village every town there is a club or society where this hari krishna Chanting is going on. And besides that, five hundred years ago, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there, he uh, all over India he travelled and preached the Sankirtan movement. Not only that, he has ordered to his followers, to his devotees. Not only devotees, he has ordered to every Indian. to preach the sankirtan movement all over the world so he has said in these words that bharat bhumi te manushya janma hoilo ja janma sarthak kori karo paropaka means anyone who has taken birth in india as human being he must make his life perfect and preach this cult all over the world and he has also said prithivite ache joto nagoradi gram sarvatro prachar hoibe molna means that as many villages and towns are there on the surface of the globe everywhere the hari krishna mantra will be preached so this hari krishna movement or krishna consciousness has just begun you will see in future in every village every town they will chant and dance so it is the chaitanya mahaprabhu prediction that is being fulfilled nobody can check it already we have got about 100 branches all over the world and all kinds of people taking part to this movement without rejecting their own religion take to this movement well it is not rejecting it is reforming the catholic religion also teaches Love of God or love of Christ. So, if I say the truth, it will not be very palatable. But is this moment is reformation. But another thing is Catholic, Hindu, Muslim, or whatever you may be. Everyone accepts there is God. So we are teaching not to formally. Accept there is God, but know what is God and love Him. So those who are interested for higher knowledge of God, they will take it. The point is simply officially to accept God. There is God. No, you know what is God, 
what is his teacher, what he is doing, what is acting, what is his name, what is his address, everything you know and try to love it. That you are teaching. So those who are actually serious to know about God, they will come to this movement. Those who simply know God, officially there is God, that's all. That is a different thing. That is also good. But if you want to know more, then you have to take this Krishna account. We are therefore presenting these books, eighty books, four hundred pages each, just to explain what is God. So it is a great science. Any intelligent man will appreciate. And we are getting good response, especially in America. Big, big university, college, professor, they are now purchasing. We have proposed to publish Srimad Bhagavatam in sixty volumes, but we have published only fourteen. But still, the big, big professors, they are giving us order, forward order for all the sixty volumes. As soon as scholarly people they read this book, they welcome this movement all over the world. Is that all right or any more? Any more questions? We would like to know if our religion can bring something more than the other religion. Mm -hmm. There is one religion. Who one who knows God, he is religion. One who does not know God, that religion has no meaning. Religion means to understand the order of God. That is it. But if you do not know what is God and how you can hear God. So religion without understanding of God philosophically and logically is sentiment. And philosophy without understanding of God is mental speculation. So when philosophy and religious sentiments combine, that is called religion. Otherwise it is not religion. 